We gather this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm Reverend Dr. Katrina Foster, pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church in beautiful Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and we are so glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. In the comment section, we have penned today's bulletin. You may click on that to follow along the service as well as possible, as fully as possible, so that you can sing and pray and hear the word and see it written before you as it is proclaimed. As you're watching this, we invite you to start a Facebook watch party so that you can share this with groups or friends and invite them to be a part of the service as well as we use technology to, to do the work of evangelism, to invite more and more people to the joy of salvation we have through Jesus of Nazareth. And today we begin on page three of the bulletin and I will read the introduction to the service today. Rejoice Always begins the reading from First Thessalonians. Isaiah and the psalmist make clear that God is turning our mourning into laughter and shouts of joy. All God's kids get a robe, go the words of the spiritual. It is not so much a stately, formal, pressed outfit as it is a set of party clothes, clothes we are happy to wear. We receive that robe in baptism and in worship we gather for a foretaste of God's party. Let us continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us, together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, confirmed and comforted by God's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our service on page four, prepare the royal highway. Hosanna to the Lord, for 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of the prophets that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie on page five, page five. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. We continue with the reading of the word on page six, beginning with the prophet Isaiah. First reading comes from Isaiah. Chapter 61 verses one through four, eight through 11. Though the people had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continued to face hardship and oppression. In the language of the Jubilee year described in Leviticus 25, the prophet moved by the spirit of God announces deliverance for those who are oppressed and comfort for those who mourn. A reading from Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For the Lord, for I, the Lord, love justice. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them the recompense 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, Galdat Sunday, the Joyful Sunday. Originally, Advent was uh, a penitent season of the church, much like Lent. And this was the third Sunday, the Joyful Sunday, Rejoice Always. And so it is why we have the pink candle on this day, which will mark this day as different from the other Sundays. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles on the tree. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give water to all who thirst, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And we continue with the reading of the psalm. Psalm number 126 on page seven, we will read it together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negeb. Those who sowed with tears will reap with sounds of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. We continue with the reading of the word on page eight. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul concludes his letter to the Thessalonians by encouraging them to live lives of continual joy, prayer and thanksgiving. The closing blessing is grounded in the hope of Christ's coming. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
says, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. John himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the people sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? John said, I am not. Are you the prophet? John answered, no. Then they asked him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked John, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, O Christ. In the season of Advent, we hear predominantly from John the Baptist. And so it may stand to reason that the way to prepare for the coming of Jesus is to listen to John, John the baptizer. Hear John, the testimony guy. They had been sent out from the people in Jerusalem. Notice John was not in the center of town. He wasn't where you ex would expect some kind of big announcements to come from. But instead, he was there on the margins, on the edges. In kind of a not very important place, a place called Bethany, which we know this place from other parts of scripture, but a place called Bethany, where he is baptizing. And the people had sent a delegation to go out to where he was, and to say, who are you? By what authority are you doing these things? Who sent you? What's going on? You're causing a ruckus. You're causing a disruption. People are going out to be baptized by you. There are people asking questions. You're drawing away from the center of our lives. You're drawing away from the power centers, the places of importance. You're drawing us away into, where are we, Bethany? There's you know, no Yahoo reviews for this place. There's no travelocity points for this place. There's nothing here. Why are we out here? There's nothing. It's kind of like if you've watched the prom and you see the, um, the Broadway stars are going to somewhere in Indiana and they're like, there's a big boy and they think it's a gay um, uh, club or something and it's not, it's a restaurant. And um at one point they go to Applebee's and um, she says, take me to this place, the Apple and Bees. And it's just, it's a nowhere place to them because New Yorkers were so self-centered. We think this is the world and what is else is there possibly, but it's this worldview, right? Jerusalem, Jerusalem is Broadway. Jerusalem is New York. Jerusalem is where the center of all that is important is happening. Why would you be anywhere else? And yet, here is John beyond the Jordan and this nowhere place and this nowhere land, and he's a no name person, and they're forced to go out into the wilderness to meet him there. And so they go. And it's a frustrating line of questioning for them. Why are you doing this? Who are you? 
Are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? No. Who are you? And he says, I am the one that Isaiah spoke of. I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. I am the one who comes to prepare the ground. I am the one who comes to capture your attention. I am the, the team that goes ahead so that when the one comes, you are not distracted by so many things, by the myriad distractions of daily life, even in a time of pandemic, even in a time of COVID, even as we throughout the country are going back into stay at home orders so that we can actually protect our neighbors and with a sense of patriotism, care about our nation. Even in times like this, we are still distracted by a great number of things. So John comes repeatedly in this season of Advent to draw our attention, to draw our attention to a God who shows up through unexpected people in unexpected places saying unexpected things. God does not come in the center of the power, in the center of where we think important things should happen. God, it is clear, shows up most fully out on the edges, on the periphery, in the margins. And so they go to him and they ask him, who, what, why, how? And none of his answers are very satisfying for them. All they know is that John is disruptive and disrupting. And we have been living in a time of disruption and of disruptive voices, calling from the margins, calling us to focus our attention differently in different places, to see different things, the who, what, why, how. We are being invited to look differently at the world and we need to look differently at the world because God does not see as we see. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. Thanks be to God. But God is calling us to see, to live, to speak, to prepare differently. And this is a different time in human history. This is a Kairos time where God is in breaking, disrupting, our lives, disrupting all that we had built, these, these false idols of certainty, of ease. God instead is using what has come upon us to point out the fissures in our lives, the fissures in our communities, in our societies, to bring into sharp repose the reality of how we have treated one another. We will break the 300,000 dead by COVID mark, if not today, then possibly by tomorrow. We now have over 3,000 people a day, over 3,000 of our fellow Americans dying a day from COVID. 9-11 took less than that, and yet, after 9-11, we passed all kinds of legislation. We created an entire new department, the Department of Homeland Security. We hunted down the people who were responsible. We have killed most of them. We went to war in two countries, one of which we didn't need to, and the other one we quit paying attention to. Less than half of that was killed on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Less than that was killed on the Titanic when it went down. And we all know the story of the Titanic. There have been blockbuster movies made that were the biggest movies ever made about the Titanic. Less than half the number of people who died daily in our country from COVID died on the Titanic. 
And yet we all know that. We all respond. We have great ceremonies for Pearl Harbor Day. We have an annual remembrance of 9-11. It shaped us, warped us, and reconfigured us. These huge events where far less people died than are dying every day right now in this country, our fellow Americans from COVID, over 3,000 a day, because we, because we have decided not to trust science, which is a God-given reality, but instead we have played politics with the lives, especially of the least and the last, the most vulnerable in our societies, those who cannot socially distance because they live in crowded conditions, those who cannot afford to work from home, who don't have that as an option. This plague and God's judgment has exposed the reality of how we have built ourselves and the wrongness of our world, the kingdom, over and against God's empire, God's dominion where God is on the edges calling us to look, to see, to value, and to build ourselves differently. When the vaccine comes to us all, and it will, when it comes, we cannot go back to being who we were. We should not. We can no longer afford to ignore the voices of the people who we would rather not listen to. We can no longer see essential workers as anything less than that. We can no longer assume that our medical professionals can handle any and everything that we throw at them because clearly they can't. They are only human. And there are only so many beds in the ICUs and so many ventilators and so many people trained. And they should not be treated that way either when we could do the simplest thing, the most Christian thing, the most patriotic thing, and just put on a mask. Put on a mask, protect yourself and your neighbor. That is the most basic Christian 101 thing that you can do. And yet here's another word from scripture, from the testimony of John, from the testimony of St. Paul, that even now, we are called to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not say to the people on the margins, the people who are trying to draw attention, shut up. Do not quench the spirit because those are holy utterances coming to us, disrupting our lives. Do not despise the words of the prophets. Do not, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In this season of pandemic, in this season of uncertainty, in this season of unrelenting anxiety and strain and stress, God calls us, in spite of it all, to rejoice, to rejoice. We can be people who trust that we are loved by Jesus, even when everything is falling apart around us, even when internally we are shaking with anxiety, even when there is no evidence for us to rejoice over we are still called to rejoice nonetheless, to pray without ceasing. As many of you know, my family has been going through a time of tremendous stress, tremendous anxiety, tremendous challenges. My daughter diagnosed with brain cancer and in a 17 day period, recently my mother and father dying, not of COVID, but dying. One of these things at a time would be sufficient for any human being to handle. All of them, all at the same time, on top of COVID and the stresses of trying to figure out how to 
continue to be a church when you can't gather. All of these things are impossible. It's impossible. And yet, what Paul instructs and teaches and lived out in his time of ministry on the earth and has handed on to us is absolutely true. Rejoice always. We can make a choice. We can find joy, live in hope, serve one another, or we can live in misery and in suffering and in lived out resentment, anger, and wrath at one another. One of those is definitely a better response to God's love. And one of those is a much better response to our neighbor. And the way that that happens is to pray without ceasing. Praying without ceasing does not mean blowing flowery rainbows at God. It doesn't mean screaming holy, holy, holy all the time and alleluia. There are times when prayer is wrath at God, when prayer is yelling at God, when prayer is taking all that you have that is within you that is toxic and horrible and killing you and instead turning it on God. Because God is big enough to handle our anger, our hurt, our resentment. God is big enough to receive these things from us so that we can be freed from them, so that we can rejoice always. God doesn't want just the easy parts of us. God became human so that the entire human being can be redeemed. God cannot redeem what God cannot become. And if we look at the witness and the testimony of Jesus himself on the cross in Mark's gospel, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you not think that that was a time of rage, of hurt, of woundedness, of anger? Of course, Jesus was angry. He was sent here by his dad to do something, and his dad disappeared. We know that the story doesn't end there. But in that moment, in that moment, Jesus himself experienced completely and fully the limitless wounding and hurt and resentment and anger of the world and took it all upon himself and it killed him. We killed him. So in this season, as we prepare like no other year for Christmas, where the call should be from the church in its entirety, all churches, all faith communities throughout this country, to call our members to love each other enough to stay home, to wear a mask, to wash your hands, to socially distance, to not travel, to gather online, to give up those things that we love so much so that the people we love even more will still be alive for the holidays next year. This is a season that calls us to concretely actually give a damn about somebody outside of ourselves and to prepare our hearts for God who comes in the midst of it all, in the midst of COVID and cancer and death and isolation and loneliness and uncertainty and economic hardship to come in the midst of all of that as a little baby born not in the center of power, but to a single mom as far on the margins as you can possibly get. That is where God comes first. And from there, he comes to us completely. So my friends, pray without ceasing. 
so that you can rejoice always. Pray without ceasing so that like John, you can give a testimony about how Jesus has changed you and how hope in God has held you and kept you through it all. Pray without ceasing so that you can remember that you are someone whom God has chosen and whom Jesus loves. And nothing can change that. Nothing. Jesus loves you. I do too. Amen. We continue with our hymn, Each Winter as the Year Grows Older, on page 10 of the bulletin, page 10 of the bulletin. We confess our faith of the words of the Nicene Creed as it is written on pages 11 and 12 of the bulletin. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. 
Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all those for whom we have been invited to pray. Lifting up to you, Lori, Kathleen, Jamel, Danny, Elizabeth, Anita, Sharika, Heather, Chris, Irene, Anna, Darlene, and Josette, Jackie, Malisha, Justin, Felicia, Laura, Sydney, Carolyn, and Caroline, Moses, Jan, Miss Mary, Miss Roberta, and the Stephen family, for Julio and Ricky, Tess, Danny, and his sons, Ryan and Shane, the Lopez family, Martha, Machette, Cachet, Sage, Jimmy Lee, and Mariah, the Reverend Jerry Gata, the Reverend Jane Gata, Roberta, Floyd and his wife, Dinora, the Reverend Barbara Crafton, Father Pete and his mother, Raphael and Ruben, Alex and Melinda, his mother, the McBurney, Rodriguez, Maj and Johnson families, Richard, Lori, Mustafa, Randy, June, John, Kimberly, Heather, Eleanor, Gail, Vivian, Jeanette, Tingling, Johnny, Catherine, Irene, Eileen, Ralph, Dion, Roberta. For my brother Robert and sister-in-law Jennifer and her stepfather Jerry. For my nieces Hannah and Lily, Kristen and her husband Beau. For the entire Calamanis family. For Lloyd, Morgan, Elton, Karen, Elena, Miss Ruth, Chaz. For Livy and her son, Diego and Russell, Herbie, Virginia, Jean, Eileen, the Reverend Marv Hank, Anna, Shimbug, Shimbug, Terry, and his daughter Val, Carol, Arlene, Daniel, Adeline, Teresa, Angela, baby Abraham, William and William, Kristen and Christina, Brent, Jordan, Monique, Richard, June, Tara, Billy, Cheryl, Donna, Margaret, Stanley, for Dion and Lisa, for Julian and Shirley, Sarah and Noah, Christopher, Thomas and Pete. We pray for all those who live with mental illness, their families and friends, all those who live in the ravages of addiction, that they would turn to you and seek recovery one day at a time. We pray for our siblings who are homeless and our siblings who are incarcerated. We pray for all migrants and refugees. We lift prayers of thanksgiving for all doctors, nurses, EMTs, and midwives. We give you thanks for those who work for the Department of Sanitation or on janitorial staffs and housekeeping staffs. We pray Another prayer of thanksgiving for all those who work for the MTA, driving buses and trains and subways, cleaning them, fixing them, and working in the tunnels. We give thanks for all in law enforcement, especially in the 94th precinct where our church is. 
for all who work for the FDNY. We pray prayers of hope for the Department of Education, for the administrators, but especially for the families trying to figure ed education out, for the students who are trying to learn, and for teachers and professors who are trying to convey the joy of learning good and useful knowledge. We pray for all funeral directors. We pray also for all of our politicians, for our president, Donald, our vice president, Mike, the cabinet and staff, the Congress and the judiciary. We pray especially that the Congress would pass and the president would sign a COVID relief bill before they go on paid vacation. We pray for all of those who have been called to elected office, especially our president-elect, Joe, and our vice president-elect, Kamala, for their cabinet picks and their staff and all who will serve in that administration. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you are for joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love, especially Lucy, martyr of the church. And we also remember the almost 300,000 who have died of COVID in this country. We also bring before your throne, Joey, Thomas Tower, Carrie, Richard, Rosemary, Kathleen, Tingling's mom, Marge, Hope, Olga, Barbara, William, Kenny, Linda, Chris, Ray, Doris, Lawrence, Bob Devine, Arlene, Alyssa, for Kate, for Miss Marianne, and for my parents, Billy and Loretta. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. At this time, we come to the offering. Um, we do invite you to share generously. Um, to give online to St. John's, the online portal is listed at the bottom of page 13, and it will also be put up in the comment section. You may use this to make a gift, um, to make an offering using um, debit card or credit card. And uh, we invite you to give not because Jesus needs the money, um, but because it is important for humans to share. Um, when we are of service, when we share, when we help someone else, quite often it helps us. And when we intentionally, purposefully, and regularly share a portion of what God has entrusted to our management to steward it, we are acknowledging God and taking away our faith in false idols. Um, money is the biggest false idol there is. So my family and I continue to tithe and to give sacrificially above and beyond 10% here to St. John's Lutheran Church. We also share with other organizations and ministries that make our hearts sing that we want to support financially. And we invite you, if you want to give elsewhere, not to St. John's, the important thing is to give. And so you are invited to be generous um, somewhere, but to be generous. We now sing, Create in Me a Clean Heart, O God, on top of page 14. pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen.
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The announcements are on page 15. Uh, the first Sunday of January will be the next time we distribute Holy Communion in front of the church at 1130. You must be wearing a mask uh, when you come forward to receive communion. Um, this Wednesday and the next, we have midweek Advent service, Holden Evening Prayer at 8 p.m. It's on Facebook Live. And we've had about 2,000 people watch our last service. Um, it's a gorgeous service, and I hope that you will join us on Wednesday night. If you would like to make uh, a donation for a Christmas plant, we will get some plants to put on the altar um, for the Christmas Eve service. Um, so if you would like to make a donation uh, for a plant, you can do so um, through the online giving portal. And please email me the name or names of people whom you would like to remember or honor. So we remember those who have passed, we honor those who are living. Um, we also sent out uh, an email this week, a uh, end of year appeal. We invite you to, as you wrap up 2020 and consider your uh, the last of the year giving above and beyond a tithe, um, that you consider St. John's Lutheran Church. Um, if you did not get the email, please shoot me an email and I will send it to you. Um, and there also is the information on how to make a donation uh, through um, online giving or by check. <laughs> Today at 11, we have our virtual coffee hour. Grab some beverage of your choosing and join us at the Zoom address here. Um, and I'll be jumping on that and there's a waiting room, I'll be admitting you. Um, I wanna say a word of thanks and gratitude to Jan Lorenzen, uh, to Heather Murphy and her brother, I don't remember his name. Um, he brought the tree over yesterday. We have wreaths on the front of the tree and Jan and company put lights up on the tree. You can see it there. Um, and thank y'all for keeping the the traditions uh, going of um, making things different so that we can appreciate Advent and Christmas more. Uh, thank you to everybody who's part of the service today, to Noelle and Stephen for gorgeous music. I didn't know the hymn of the day that was beautiful. Uh, to my wife, Pamela Kalamanis for reading and to Mike for uh, running tech so ably. And I think that's all. Oh, Christmas Eve service. Our Christmas Eve service will be on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. And it will be a hybrid service. Noel and I will be here. Um, if the weather is decent, we'll have the front doors open, the gate closed, the front doors open. And there have been some folks who have asked if they can just come stand in front of the building. Yes, it's a public sidewalk. Um, you can come and stand because of COVID and because we do not want to create a situation where we put people in danger. Uh, we will not gather inside, um, but we'll probably hand out candles to folks outside if it's not raining or too windy. And during the season singing of Silent Night, we'll turn the lights down here inside and encourage people outside to light their candles and, um, and make it as uh, beautiful as uh, we can in this unusual time. So 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and please send me your emails uh, with people you would like to uh, remember, to honor, 
or to give thanks for on Christmas. Receive now the benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you and all creation peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our ascending song is People Look East on page 16. Page 16. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. See y'all soon.